Now, our next guest is no stranger to a Hollywood film set, having worked with the likes of Olivia Colman, Idris Elba and Daniel Craig, to name a few. And now uh, vocal coach Neil Swain's most recent project has seen him thanked personally by the wonderful Emma Stone. She was getting her BAFTA for a role in Poor Things and this is a wonderful moment. This is what happened. She's an experiment. Good evening. Her brain and her body are not quite synchronised. But she is progressing at an accelerated pace. Tell me, where did she come from? I shall. For it is a happy tale. I am Bella Baxter, and there is a world to enjoy, circumnavigate. It is the goal of all to progress, grow. A woman plotting her course to freedom. How delightful. Oh. <laughs> and Neil is here now to tell us why it all starts with a voice. Good morning, Neil. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> I mean, you know, you couldn't have two uh, different accents on today. Yeah, we've got Craig's Irish, we've got it's Mike lovely. Bristolian. Yeah, no, it's great. They're both real. Yeah. I know, yeah, I know. They're, no, they're... I know. You're not putting them on. <laughs> um, I mean, they're all thanking you at their award ceremonies. How did you get into the industry? I trained as an actor. First of all, yeah, sorry, I'm <clears throat> just getting over the lurgy. Um, I trained as an actor, I went to drama school. Um, and then uh, I went to the Central School and did the voice teaching course. And actually, whilst I was at drama school, my head of voice said to me, I think you're interested in, in voice. I think that's something you should think about. And when she said it to me, I thought, are you just trying to say that I won't have a career as an actor? Mm -hmm. Is that where you, you know, you're steering me in another direction? And, um, and actually, after a few years of acting, I realised she was right, actually. That was something that I wanted to do, you know. Um, and so I trained as a voice teacher, worked in the theatre, um, worked at the Royal Shakespeare Company, um, and then went to, uh, into the West End and did lots of uh, lovely plays. I worked at the National. So how did you make the transition from theatre, then, to film sets? A friend of mine uh, was working on a film, uh, Mel Churcher, um, and she had to leave the film early. And she said to me, look, I know that you're interested in coming into film and you want to work in film and television. Do you want to come on board and, and finish off the film? And it was great because she, you know, she talked me into it. She told me about the etiquette of a film set and how it all worked and um, where to go for lunch, very important, <laughs> uh, where to get your sides and, and, yes. um, and yeah. And, and so that was my first job. And then I got into doing uh, other TV yeah. via that. I the, did Rome for HBO, uh, um, uh, that was a, a big job as well, so... The names yeah. are Helen Bonham Carter, Mark Ruffalo, Daniel Craig, Kira Knightley, Hugh Jackman, Susha Ronan, Judi Dench, of course, we saw, you know, what you did, uh, you know, th this year as well. Um, incredible actors, and we presume they can just do these things off the cuff, but they, they all need help when they're, they're trying these accents, do they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, some come into it with... Uh, uh, more preparation uh, uh, than others, I think, and some have more of an aptitude for it than others. But, yeah, um, uh, they all work hard. They want to do a good job. You know, they want to serve the accent and, and I think, feel a, a sense of responsibility for it as well, you know. Um, Particularly when you're telling big stories, I think of the King's Speech, because you worked with Colin Firth. I did, yeah. And you, you helped him with his stutter in that movie. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's a, yeah. a very different side of it. And, 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 but he absolutely nailed it. You absolutely nailed it. Talk to us about that. Yeah, well, for me, that was interesting, because I'm not a, a speech therapist. That's not my background. So, again, I have, had help from a friend and colleague, um, uh, Annie Morrison, who is a speech therapist. She came in. Um, helped me, the British uh, Stammering Association helped as well and gave a, a lot of advice. And unfortunately, you know, we're very lucky. We still have a lot of those old Pathé newsreels that we could listen to and watch. And, and it's not just the, 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 the realisation in terms of speech with a stammer. It's also there's a great deal of physicality that comes with it as well. So it was useful to watch Bertie and, and to see how that manifested itself in, in his body as well as his speech. And, so that was great to, 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 to work on. We've got a little clip. I'd like oh. to see it, actually, to remind us. Yeah, OK, that. I would, too. It's surely the mere primitive doctrine that might is right. For the sake of all that we ourselves hold dear, it is unthinkable that we should refuse to meet 
the challenge. How, how does it feel watching that, knowing that you were responsible? Um, yeah, amazing. I mean, I'm very proud of the film. Um, uh, and it was a great job to do. It, you know, it was, it was wonderful. And, and for me, as somebody that works with voice, in a way, it was a project that had at the very centre of it the, the idea of, of, of a voice and, and a person who didn't have a voice. You know, mm. if, I mean, physically, emotionally, psychologically, Bertie couldn't find his voice. And through that work that he did with Logue, you know, he, he, he found a voice at a time when the nation needed it during the war right. and, and needed to hear from him. How do you start? When someone comes into you and they go, I need to be Australian, Irish, Bristolian, whatever, where do you start? I think I always, for me, it, it always feels like I'm starting from the very beginning, even if it's an accent that I know very well, even if it's an actor with whom I've worked a lot. Um, because the challenges are always different. You know, the characters are different, the script is different. Um, and so for me, I always have like a, a framework, you know, a blueprint of sounds. And then within those, that blueprint of sounds, there's lots of possibilities. Mm. You know, there are lots of choices, lots of subtlety. Um, Your geography um, must be amazing. My geography? Yeah. That was terrible. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not good at all. Um, but yeah, it, and then it's that area, it's that sort of territory that I find most interesting, you know, that creative side about, you know, as I'm sure you know, in, in Bristol, there are lots of different subtleties. Mm. There are lots of different, in, in, in Dublin, Ireland, there yeah, are yeah. An, enormous. Yeah. And, and no, accent sounds exactly the same you know if we think about people that we grew up with i think about people that i was at school with i grew up in norfolk and so you know my, boy. my accent you isn't like that boy you know it's 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 yeah. i know not yeah. exactly yeah. i know it's interesting isn't yeah. it that, that they're yeah so you know my grandfather used to say all right boy all right, how are you getting on boy yeah. nice to see you boy <laughs> and, and everything was beautiful and and when the coffee shops was first mm. popular you know i remember hearing people say um i think i'll have a cappuccino right. you know boys are rocks in my boot for yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. right yeah yeah <laughs> um but um and so yes if i think about the people that i went to school with um, you know, we didn't all sound the same, even though we had the same, you know, similar upbringing, went to the same yeah. schools, you know, we all had different... There are always different subtleties, different pronunciations, different yeah. flavour, and that's what interests me in accents. Is, is it possible now? Everyone watching at home would love to try something. Is there something quickly you can teach us and the folks at home, an accent we can try to get us through the rest of the morning? <laughs> well, you, we, we were listening to the word water, and you were thinking about water, yeah, water. 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 And um, water. water, exactly. Water. So if we think about what I'm doing when I say that word, you know, what's happening is that if you, if you watch my lips, my lips really round and find that or vowel. I hope you're doing war. this at home. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So if you think about finding the rounding, the movement of the lips, war, and they're doing it behind the camera, I can see. <laughs> <laughs> really finding the, the lips to really shape that sound. It pulls that or vowel into shape, war. Water. War. Water. And, then, and then we're really finding a strong T, the water. Water. And unlike your accents, I don't have the R at the end of that vowel. <laughs> So, yeah, so I just come off of it, water. Water. Oh, Neil, I'm actually... There we are. That was very quick, wasn't it? That, was, that was like accent 101 in, okay. in one minute. I'm actually <laughs> speaking proper. Oh. So if you we base anyway. our whole accent for the rest of the show on water... That, that, you'll be fine. I Absolutely. think I'm going... Yeah. very good. I think I'm, lots of people I'm will I'm going to stay off, with that. Neil, thank you so much for your time you. today. You're very it's welcome. Really good, You're right. very welcome. It's a pleasure. Thanks,